Hey guys, it's Peter here with GoodyReader.com. We have an interesting comparison here today. A lot of people are requesting that we compare the new Nook, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook with pretty much anything of the newest release. So what we have here is the Kobo Arc 10 HD. And this is the latest device from Kobo in terms of a tablet. And this is the latest device from Barnes & Noble, even though it has no look Nook logoing on it whatsoever, except for a a little bit of preloaded content. What we're gonna do is look at a book, the PDF experience, and then a little bit of just the overall UI and store discovery. So what we're gonna do is start with a book. We're gonna open up an ebook on both of these. This is the max brightness. If you haven't seen that yet, we are at max brightness here. So um, it's not quite as bright as the Samsung tablet, as you can see. So the page turns are a little bit different. You have a somewhat of a peak, whereas this is just goes right to the next page. If we click the text button, we have a couple ways to change everything. Font size, dual page layout, everything changes live, of course. You have uh, fonts. You have six different modes here, whereas pretty much everyone else really only has the three, sepia, sepia, night. Uh, Barnes & Noble goes extra step to go gray, a couple of tans, a brown, and so forth. So we're just gonna do a long press on both of these guys. We'll add a note just to see what they look like. So here's the keyboards. Obviously this is over 10 inches, so this is going to be a lot easier to type. You have a lot more screen real estate. That's not to say the seven inch is any of a slouch because it isn't, it's actually quite responsive. You have different ways to highlight, different colors. Highlights, you can bookmark, that's kind of cool. There's no page turn animations on these, but you do have things like Facebook share. Um, you have uh, wherever you want basically is a lot of functionality with this. You only have really context, Facebook wall, Twitter. We have all of this on the uh, Kobo device. So this is the e-reading experience. If you guys have any, I uh, if you guys have had any questions about what they're both like, this is what to expect when reading on both of these devices. Now, and a lot of people actually, we should do this now that we have uh, the chance. A lot of people are always asking what the max font settings look like on devices. So this is what you, <laughs> this is the max on both of these. So this obviously goes the extra step to put six words on one page. Whereas uh, because this is such a big screen, it's a lot easier to read as it is. So this seems to overcompensate a little bit, but what we're going to do now is look at a PDF. Uh, so we'll look at it with Nookbooks, which is the preloaded software. And we're just going to look at this with the preloaded software as well. Nothing sideloaded here, no Adobe viewer. This is office suite and this is Nookbooks. So what can we do with the PDFs? Let's see if we can pinch and zoom first off. We can on both of these. So that's really neither of them has any sort of an advantage over each other in that sense. Although the Kobo gets a little bit laggy when it's pinched and zoomed all the way in. Let's do some page turns. It's not too bad. Double tap, much more of a zoom level on the Samsung. We don't have any long press. You'll have to download a third party app to do anything like that. Do we have long press on here? We do. So you actually can make highlights and we can actually make notes and define things. Very interesting. So we'll save that. See that there's a note there now indicating there's a note and you can long press when you're zoomed in too. It doesn't look like you can share that, but you can dictionary look up that word, which is and Google Wikipedia. So that's kind of cool. And of course, both of these devices have the ability to do all that. If you download something from Google play, cause these both have Google play, but as a stock experience, it looks like the PDF functionality is a lot greater on the Samsung device than it is on the Kobo. So this is the PDF experience. Hope this kind of answered all your questions or concerns if you guys did have any of the sort. You see the resolution is a lot different. The resolution on this is far greater uh, than the Samsung also because it's boasting a much larger screen. The stock experience for 
Um, I mean, the UI here is a stock experience of Android on the Samsung. It is very, very bare bones. You get a little bit more of a skin feel on the Kobo because you get Michael's face right there, a bottom bar, and then Kobo's hub, as well as different bookshelves. So if we click on eBooks, we made this shelf of uh, certain books there. Sorry about the reflection. That's our heating vent up on the ceiling because this is very reflective. But this is basically the device head to toe. They both have Google Play, so we can't show you a Kobo app store, so to speak. So um, we'll just check out the Nook store and we'll show it alongside Google Play. <clears throat> so remember this has Google Play as well, but this is the Barnes and Noble Nook shop because this actually has three stores. It has Samsung apps, it has um, Google Play, and it has the Nook store. So. Looking at this, this is Google Play. Everyone knows Google Play. It's uh, tried and true. You know it works. Everything's flawless. Uh, the Barnes & Noble is a different story because on the previous generations like the Nook HD, Nook HD+, Plus, unless you're in the UK or the USA, you cannot download much of the content. Whereas this really opens it up internationally. If you go to any app on the Nook store, you can purchase and download it worldwide because this is on a Samsung device now. There's no more geographical restrictions. So that's always really nice to see that you can just download something, click away, and it's yours. Free, confirm. You would never see that before on this guy. So this has been a quick comparison versus the, uh, com comparing the Kobo Arc 10 HD. This is the latest tablet from Kobo and the Barnes & Noble Nook version of a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 labeled the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. If we flew over anything, if we missed out on anything, please let us know. We always want to know how we can improve our videos. If you say, hey, you didn't mention this, we'll try our best to go back, redo this, and maybe do a catch-up video because we do take requests uh, here at Goody Reader. And if you guys have any requests whatsoever, um, just let us know and we'll see if we can accommodate. I know I clicked do not agree. I should have clicked I agree, but I'm talking. So uh, this has been a quick comparison. Please let us know if you guys need anything. Leave a comment. We reply to each and every comment here at goodyreader.com. And for another Goody Reader comparison, this is Peter. Everyone, have a great day. What is in there? We have a SD card micro up to 32 gigabytes. We have status indicator light. This extra hole is for the latch, like so. And we have the micro USB port, which is utilized for charging the device and transferring data to and from the device to your computer. So we tap the power button to wake it up. And this is the home screen, Mike. Tell us what we're looking at. Okay, the resolution is 1440 by 1080. So you're getting tremendous screen clarity and resolution. It also has a front lit display and you can get this 